Well, hello there, friends. So today, what we're going to be doing is trying to make something of this. So this is a family heirloom. An elderly woman came to me and says, can you reupholster this for me? This used to belong to my grandfather. I remember sitting on this thing when I was like five years old, she says. And you know what? Look at that. It's, we got like um, straw as a filling in there. So anyway, I, I explained to her, explained, exclaimedly explained to her that I was going to be making some changes to this, that whatever I do to, to duplicate this here, it's going to be more beautiful than what she gave me. So anyway, um, I'm going to give, try to give her something beautiful. We're going to give this a makeover and a transformation. And you'll get to see here what it looks like in a few minutes. Or you could always just fast forward it, but I'd prefer if you watch the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I told her that I was going to make a real wood bottom for her. Because what it had before is like a cardboard. And you can see the material that they put over the cardboard. It really just wore through during over the years. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And that will be the new bottom. That's where I'm going to start. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start making my patterns. So what do we have if I go all the way around this way? Oh, look at that. It's within 54 inches. So that's great. So all I really need is a strip then. You see, I'm going to go past the bottom, right? So we'll add like, what, an inch and a half or something. So probably be about like that. So really, I need a piece about, I'll just go uh, 12 and a half inches wide. So this is the color selected right there. Partners Vino. So what's the first thing we always do when we get a new roll of material? We always check it to make sure that it's square, that this last cut right here was square. This one here is not too bad. It's a little bit off, and I can fix that. You see what I mean? Not much there to cut. But you know what? Now we are confident in knowing that it is square. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure off 12 and a half inches. Next, I'm going to need two welts. So some people might call them beading and some people might call them piping. But you know what? I call them welt. So one way to do that, uh, you know, the welt just really has to be cut anywhere from about one inch wide to one and a half inch is usually what I go. So let's go about a one and a half wide. myself make the other one and a half while I'm at it. So you can make it like that. This is for my two welts or beating or piping. Don't beat me up in the comments. So I thought I could just make the top pattern from the bottom. So I've already cut out the wood. So it's pretty much already given me the shape. So I'm just going to go out a little bit further than the wood 
about a half an inch or so. Like that. Just to increase the size. A little bit. So as you can see here, pretty lumpy, pretty bumpy. So that's why I am going to use the scrim. So I'm going to foam back this vinyl here. So that way we don't get the bumpy and the lumpies. I at least tone it down a lot. And now for technique number 32. Many of my viewers here um, have seen this before. And you know what it is. It is the half and half method or technique of sewing the foam to the material. Now I'm going to do the same here for the top. Top piece. Half and half. Actually, a piece at this small doesn't really matter, does it? So we'll just uh, glue it up. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing on the line that I drew. We'll get a cut out here. So, as always, just trim right next to that thread without actually cutting it. Now, for the side here, I'm just going to sew the top edge here and then cut that out. So it really is welt. That's what it says right there. It's not, it doesn't say beading or piping. It does say welt. And that's what I've been calling it for 45 years. Because that's how I order it. Tell me what you think in comments. So I'm getting there, so now is a great time to hit that like button, thumbs up, and like, 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 so that way other people can see this video too. So I'm going to go ahead and make the, the top weld here first. So I'm going to find somewhere that's center usually. What I do, and I'll start back here. So I guess this is my technique number 489. So what that does is um, th I leave this loose. So that way when I sew the weld on and I come back to this area, we're going to make a disappearing seam right there. So let's just go ahead and start back here. So now this is where things get a little special. This is what I do, is right here where the welt ends. Okay, what I usually do is I will cut about, oh, maybe three quarters of an inch from the end right here. 
Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to cut it straight across here, so I'm going to add in about another three-quarter of an inch like that. I need to take this thread apart. Then I will take this one apart a little bit. Okay, so I have my welt insert there I have to get rid of. You see that? So I'll, I'll leave one of them long. So I guess I can cut this one. So now you see that the welt, welt insert here is going to meet in the middle. Okay, so now what I do is I make sure that there isn't going to be enough seam allowance there. So now... Take this here. We're going to sew these two together. I hope you're catching this. Well, look at that. Now, you can take that seam allowance, fold it back, put the welt insert back where it belongs. You see that right there? Now just fold everything, finish off my welt. Now for technique number 22. It's so low. The number is so low because it is so important, especially when you're fabricating something like this, is to check and recheck your work. So check your work and recheck, check and recheck, check and recheck. One thing she asked for are these ears, these little ears that are right here. I think that's one of the things that makes this piece here so unique. So I thought, okay, well, well, how do I do that? So I thought, okay, I'll just grab this piece of material here. And then if I fold it like that, and I thought, oh, that was like too easy. That was too easy.
So similarly to the way I did the welt, we're going to put this side panel on here. So I marked my center, and I'm going to go a little bit, about a half inch past center right there. And that's where I'm going to start my stitch. A little bit further back. Like that. Okay, so now I see my center mark right here. Okay, I can see that I have about a half inch overlap on that one and I have about the same on this one you okay, better recheck that that didn't look right okay yep I was right the second time looks like I have to go in about this far because the center is right here so I'm gonna end up cutting right there so I'm about a half inch long so I'm just gonna take a half inch right off of that edge Okay, let's check and recheck. That's looking pretty good there. So let's go ahead. So these two to here together. Okay, you see that? So now we have everything's lined up really nice on that center. So now all we got to do is just close that last stitch. And there we are. Now for technique number 19. Wow, that's really low number, right? Because it is so important. So what that is, is inspecting your work. Okay, so you want to make sure that everything looks nice and tight. You don't see any threads anywhere. And, um, you know, because really the reason it's so important is because if there's something wrong with it, you have the chance to fix it, and you get to fix it before your customer ever sees it. So you want to see it before your customer does, okay? Because we want to don't want to have a bad reputation. So there we go. So me and the customer had discussed keeping the sides because we don't know what's containing the hay in here. My guess is that in this, it is the sides that are containing the what's inside. So I'm just going to go ahead and just cut off the top here. Oh, look at that. You get to see this for the first time just like me. And this thing here must have been made in the old days. Is the anticipation getting to you yet? Okay. Well, there's that. It's like a little bit of cotton underneath the cotton is going to be the hay. So I also told her I was going to put a piece of foam on top so that would be more comfortable for somebody to actually sit on it. Well, let's see what happens.
too bad. Okay, I'm going to take another risk here. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to take off the bottom here. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, look at that. Yep, it was just a piece of cardboard. You know, sometimes my videos, they're not really about the object that I'm working on. Although, they do tell their own story. But really, it's about a lot of these techniques that I'm showing you can be used for a lot of other things. So, once in a while, you might come up and you might say, Oh, I, that's really similar to what I was doing on something else. So let's just go ahead and install this thing. I'm just trimming off any other excess material that we don't need here on the bottom. Get rid of some of the bulk. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 So anyway, like I was saying, ah!